I wanted to build a Battle of the Bulge diorama that incorporated a deuce and a half in the mix. So I decided to have a German half track that has recently captured a broken down deuce and a half and is in the process of commandeering its contents, including the gas. The diorama really didn't need a bridge over a creek to work, but I thought it would add some interest, so I integrated them in my design. I rarely ever had more than a few hours to work on the diorama at any given time. Needless to say, it took me well over a year to complete. I'll get into the building of it now. The Tamiya 251 1D is still a great kit, but like any kit, there is room for improvement. Royal Model makes excellent updates for many kits. I used both 1 and 2 in my build. The rubber band tracks have to go. I used some individual link all metal tracks on my build. The 251D had supplemental armor in the interior. I cut the plates from evergreen sheet styrene. The attachment nuts came from my PE spare parts box. In this photo, I've used some photo etch to enhance the forward bulkhead and the roof section. Note the grab handle I made from brass rod. This is a Verlinden radio that I modified and added the photo etch mount. I scratch built the headset. All the appropriate wires and cables were added to this later. After securing the photo etch to these interior cabinets, they will need a shelf made from styrene plastic. The other two items showed are the rear doors. The completed interior loaded with lots of personal items and gear. I wanted to open up the floor where the refueling receptacle is, but I couldn't find any photos of this, so unfortunately, I didn't know how to build it. I always shoot Tamiya acrylics through my airbrush. I just like them better than any other paints I've tried. The markings are Archer Dry Transfers. Also note I made the canvas cover from two-part epoxy ribbon. And this is the Tamiya 2.5 ton cargo truck. It has a Verlinden update set, Edward PE set, Royal model canvas cover, Tamiya truck accessories part set for the doors, and uh, tank workshop wheels and tires with chains. This is the resin motor from the Verlinden update set. I've added some scratch built parts and all of the plumbing. The fan belt is made from Tamiya masking tape. Note that I removed the oil pan from the resin motor so that it could sit directly on the Tamiya oil pan. That way you don't have to cut the frame to attach the motor. The motor looks great after painting. Once the cab is in place, I'll attach the throttle cable. Here is a shot from the opposite side showing the spark plug wiring. I had to scratch build the coil. Another nice resin part from Verlinden's update set. Just a little putty to make it right. Be prepared on this Royal Model canvas cover to do some grinding on the inside to get it to fit right. I wanted the rear flap to be open, so I made it out of epoxy ribbon. The cargo for the truck consists of Tamiya, Verlinden, and some from the spare parts box. Tamiya's rear view mirror looked too heavy, 
so I scratch built one from brass rod and a mirror from the PE spare parts box. It was rather difficult to come up with uh, figures that would work for this diorama. Um, after some exhaustive searching online, I came up with these uh, eight figures. We have uh, figures from Alpine, Warriors, Jaguar, and Cory. As you will note, I only had to do some minor modifications on a few of them. The base started with some styrofoam that someone was discarding. Free is always good. It was positioned inside of an oak frame and covered with sculpt mold modeling compound. The bridge is a plaster casting from Royal Model that I cut at an angle to make it work. Make no mistake, creating the pine trees is a time-consuming process. The ferns are the basis for all the tree branches. Unlike all the videos I've watched on this process, I've included the name of the ferns. After the project, the plants grew right back and my wife just loves it. Getting started, you will need some glycerin to mix with the water for the preservation process. You also need a sealable tub and some canvas squares commonly used for crochet. The canvas squares help to keep the clippings organized. Just layer them one on top of the other. Here I'm holding the clippings down in the glycerin solution with a brick. I added some green food coloring, but you really wouldn't need that if you're going to paint them which I highly recommend. For the trunks, I tapered a hardwood dowel with a hobby knife. Then I scored them with a rough razor saw uh, to indicate bark. Uh, I used hydrocol plaster for the base of the trees, but if I had to do it over again, I would use uh, epoxy ribbon because uh, the hydrocol plaster chipped quite a bit. The drying process can take four to five weeks or even longer. First remove the ferns from the solution and lay them out individually on paper towels. I recommend you blot up excess moisture with additional paper towels. After they were dry, I painted them with Tamiya flat green. Holes were drilled in the hardwood dowel and each branch was cut to size and then glued in place with Mod Podge. I wanted to include a picture of this micro drill because it was a lifesaver uh, when drilling the holes in all those uh, trunks. To make the mud, mix some 30 minute epoxy with real dirt. It looks like real mud because it basically is. Just make sure that you sprinkle some dry dirt over the top of it to tone down the glossiness. I didn't want my snow to be two feet deep. This is supposed to be just after the first light snow. Prior to applying the snow, I put down some rocks, some broken branches, and some straw-colored static grass. The snow is an excellent product from Precision Ice and Snow. It applies easily with their adhesive. For the trees, I use some spray photo adhesive and Precision Ice and Snows applicator. The creek is formed from standard casting resin. To tint the resin, I use green and brown transparent color for glass. I wanted to show movement in my water, so after the resin had set, I applied a layer of gloss Mod Podge on top of the resin. Before it sets, use your airbrush on a low setting to blow the Mod Podge into ripples. While it was still wet, I sprinkled some dried fern over the surface as floating pine needles.
I found a poster online that made a pretty good backdrop for a lot of my uh, photography. We'll just call this commandeering of available resources. While siphoning gas from the truck's gas tank, these two soldiers found them a signal magazine and are enjoying the pictures. Uh, has anybody bothered to check the tailpipe on this truck for mud? Uh, that could be the only reason why this truck is broken down. Good stuff, MREs. I went to a model shipbuilding website and ordered the rope that is used for all the tie downs on this truck. What do you think the odds are that we'll find some bratwurst and sauerkraut on that truck? Right now I'd settle for a Hershey bar. Well, at least they're sharing our cigarettes with us. In case you were wondering, the foliage on the half track is held in place by fine wire. I made the tarp cover supports from styrene strip. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.